I see somewhere you had some issues with Mac 10 back in the day or anything. No, that's because of the. Yeah, that's not one of my problems. At at a powerhouse, I had a song with uh, Westside Connection called Let's All Roll. And, um. First of all, he put me in the room with his homies from, from Compton or whatever, his blood homies. And they was tripping on me low key, but it's so. I, after a while, I got drunk. I just. And I walked on stage um, and told DJ Pooh, I was like, man, play my damn song. I'm about to leave right now. So anyway, Ice Cube wasn't mad about it, and um, Dub C wasn't mad about it, but Mac-10 was the one I was pissed off about. He tried to get his security snatch me when I'm on stage and, and try to grab me and take me off stage. And I pushed the security into the crowd and in the back of the thing. And I was like, y'all wear this motherfucking lights out. So I was at Powerhouse. That's the last time I got invited to Powerhouse ever again in life. Because I did that stupid shit. I've I done some dumb shit in my career. But ain't nobody told Mac 10 to tell his security to fuck with me. Like, that was the first thing. And then so Mac 10 tried to talk to me. You know, he was talking about, you know, don't do this, don't do that. And then anyway, I was like, anyway, we got, we going to. We still doing the video on Monday, so it was it was Saturday. We had to do the video on Monday, so I would. <laughs> if you notice in the uh, lights out video, I'm around Dub C and I'm around Ma I'm around Ice Cube, but when Mac Ten part come up, I ain't nowhere around. I ain't nowhere around Mac Ten. I ain't got no problem with him though. It's just we wouldn't we wouldn't have a good moment at that time. Ew. Okay. Now going, you know, you've been through a lot of ups and downs and everything in the music business, man. You know, what is, you know, like your big takeaway from everything, your whole career and everything that you've been through? This is my big what? You like your whole takeaway, like what's your experience been like overall? <laughs> a roller coaster. Okay. Ups and downs in between. Is either you're up or you're down. It just depends on um, what's going on at the moment. You know what I mean? It's not a it's not a business where you always gonna be okay, cause you know you got people that even like look at look at Lil Wayne. He was off for a minute. The next you know he just bow. He came back as mixtape Wayne and he bow blew back up again and started Young Money. Like, I mean it's 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 all about what you 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 give you get out of music what you give to it. You know what I mean? It's, this is not a it's not a hobby. It's not a game. If, if you give your all to music, music gonna give us all back. So the more you give the music, the the more you gonna get. Yeah. It's not, it's not a like. Well, I'll do it when I feel like it. That's that's not that's not the way this game works. Either you gonna give your all or you're not. You know what I mean? You know, I, I want to get your take on this, man. Uh, recently, DJ Quick tweeted that he deserves to be where Dr. Dre is. He's, How do you he's feel a, about that? He's already above that. You think DJ Quick is above Dr. Dre? I think DJ, DJ Quick has already achieved that. You shouldn't even say no comment like that because, first of all, DJ Quick is the only person I've seen. He could DJ, spin, and do his music and rap at the same time and rap with his people on stage, like Sugar Free is second and none, all these people on stage while he DJing, scratching, and doing the mixes, and he rapping along with him at the same time. Dr. Dre don't do that. DJ Quick is, is dope in his own right. I've seen DJ Quick do some amazing shit on stage. DJ Quick puts on a hell of a show. You damn right. I ain't seen a better show than his on the West Coast. DJ Quick will be on stage DJing and scratching his shit while he rapping, while the music is playing and shit. You, I know you've seen it before. Yeah, DJ Quick's dope. And, and put on other people's shit. Do, 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 do. And he, he, he rapping while, with the microphone while he DJing. He'll and jump he, and he, he got his artists on stage. Who the fuck does that? Yeah. DJ Quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah too say, my nigga, too say. He'll jump in the crowd. All of that. I mean, he. It, it's know. been a shit. You didn't get back on stage and keep mixing. 
Yeah. Yeah, he, he he's on point. Uh, I don't know why he's trying to uh, compare himself to Dre because him and Dre got their own backers and they both right here and here, neck and neck. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, Dre, Dre does his own thing and, and Quick does his own thing. Ain't neither one of them any worse than the other, and then the other one. Ain't, ain't, ain't neither one of them any better than the other one. They both dope as fuck. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah, real shit, man. That's my opinion, though. Huh? You know, opinions like assholes. Everybody got one. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I've um, seen them, I've seen them both at work, and I think they I think they right there standing in the stars with each other. You know what I mean? Yeah, both great artists. Right. Both great, man. This is great. Both great people inside and out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you guys get in the studio and you finally make bad, bad intentions. Yeah. Okay, what was that like? Mm, it was pretty simple. I just had to write the lyrics real, real quick and then do the clean version. And then... When you guys wrote it, did you know it was a hit? No, I didn't. I don't I don't know what's a hit until he says it's one. At what point did Dre say like this is this is the one right here? When he said let's shoot the video, then I knew it was a hit. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, Dre, Dre ain't gonna say let's shoot the video if he don't think it's a hit. I didn't know, you know, like when Dre came and handed me the crime two thousand and one album before it came out, it, it made me shed a tear because I looked on the back of it and four of the songs said written by Royal R. Harbor. And I was like, damn, I got four songs on 2001. I was like, shit. I mean, that, that's when I knew I had a chance at this business. You know what I mean? It was like, I really understood that, oh, you're going to be somebody someday. Like, and now people calling me a living legend. I'm like, I had to look that up. If you listen to my, my new album, it's called Night Vision. In my intro, it says living legend, living legend. What the fuck? Let me see what the fuck Living Legend is. So I asked my phone, what does Living Legend mean in the intro? And it says a person that does something something extremely well and is still living. And I was like, whoa, that was a cold way to start my album. So I, that's, you know, through Jubico Entertainment. And that's labeled on with. And then I got P. Wilson and Mash. You know, they, they brought me out of my back cave and he told me I was worth something again. And he showed me that, so I appreciated that. Like, cause really, I really didn't care about rap too much anymore. I didn't care, I just was like, my children growing, everything's cool, I could just relax. But, you know, when it, when it comes to, to doing something that's traditional, it's good to be a part of, of bringing back uh, the way that we should be instead of the way that we've been on the West Coast. Cause People are rapping like Atlanta people and people are rapping like other other coast people. We need to rap like the West Coast, you know what I mean? We don't need to be rapping like uh, other Jijuaza people. We need to bring us back, you mm. know what I mean? Okay. And that's the way we need to be. We don't need to be rapping like other people from other uh, states and other stuff like that. We have our own style of music, so we need to, we need to stick to that. You feel like the West Coast is a... Uh... It's changed a little bit. It's not as West Coast, or people ain't doing it like they should be doing it. Uh, I just feel like uh, it's a few uh, cats or whatever they they're just trying to trying to fit in the the to sell music, which is understandable because everybody got to make money. But it's not um, it's not the natural being of the West Coast style of music. So I mean. I just stick uh, gracefully to what to way to the way that we do stuff, and other people try to conform because they're trying to just get on and get money or whatever because and sound like other people. But that's not our style of music. Our style of music is exactly the way my album is, which is Night Vision. If you look up Nocturnal Night Vision, that that is our Shinjuwa music. That's the way we do things. You know what I mean, I got. I got a uh, new cat named Mizi on there. I got Joe Moses on there. I got Miss Toy on there. Of course, everybody know who Miss Toy is. And I got uh, DK Slaps. He's on there. And I got another man named BH. They producing, but it's our style of music. 
it's not um it's not their style of music uh, when it comes from down south. Where I'm not disrespecting nobody's music, but it's just what we do here on the West Coast is something different. You know what I mean? Than than what they do. Yeah, I mean the West Coast has always been a little bit. You know, we've always had our, our own style. You know, hip hop at times. You know, it kind of yeah, gets but to every, sound every, on the like. But every every if you think about it, every West Coast rapper that's pertinent. We all stand out. We don't sound alike. We all stand out in our own shins while our music. You know what I mean? It's not like this rapper sounds like that rapper. Or that rapper sounds like that. We all have our own personal style. And, you know, you go down south, you go to other places. They, they, you, you try. Who's that? Because they kind of some of them sound similar. And you know, you know they do dissimilar to tones and everything like that. But on the West Coast, we don't we don't do that. If you hear a Not Tone song, you're gonna know it's Not Tone. You hear Dre, you hear Dre. If you hear Q, you're gonna know it's Q. If you're Dub C, you're gonna know it's Dub C. If you're Mac 10, you're gonna know it's Mac 10. If, if you're Warren G, you're gonna know it's Warren G. Like, everybody has their own style out here. But you know, other styles of music, they tend to blend in some, somewhat together. And, it, and it, some of them sound similar. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. They all making bread, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the West Coast, we all have our own personal style. You know what I mean? And that's, that's what makes us unique out here. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, man. Definitely, definitely, man. Um, well, uh, so what are you working on right now? Uh, I got eight soundtracks to do. Eight soundtracks, wow. Yeah, for Mayhem Films. I got, through Jubico Record, they gave me uh, a three-album deal, so I got two more albums to do for them. And so I'm gonna be busy for the next probably ten years. <laughs> okay, are you uh, just writing or are you producing or you know what I'm saying what all are you doing or are you rapping? I'm doing I'm doing whatever's needed to get it out. Okay, what movies? Is there any movies particularly you could talk about? The the next the next movie about to come out through Mayhem Field is Skill That Violence. He had the Snow Black soundtrack. He had the Madison Hill soundtrack. The next one is going to be called Skill That Violence. And then after that, he's going to do uh, a remake of Three the Hard Way. And then um, I got two more albums that I got to do. And it's, you know, the name is a way to be, be seen. It just depends on how I feel about the, the music that I make. Okay. Well, that's what's up, man. Uh, you have a new album out. Nocturnal Night Vision. Yeah. Okay. And K N I G H T V I Z I O N Night Vision. Okay. And do you have any features on there or anything? Yeah, you know? and Miss Toy, uh, Joe Moses, uh, Measy Mays, new artist. And uh, oh, Slink Johnson, Black Jesus, he's on there too. That's funny. He's rapping or no? Nah, he just he did a, he did an intro uh, outro for me. It's, it's pretty funny. Okay. He's having fun. A crooked eye on there too. I and mean, crooked eye, yes indeed. Crooked King, eyes King, beast. King crooked. And of course, uh, Tupac Machiavelli. Man, that's what's up, man. It's a nice album. You guys should pick it up. Yeah. I actually think I outdid myself this time. I don't like putting it out, out unless I did better than I did last time. So people should look that up. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.